Hey YouTube, back with another gun review today. Um, got one here that I've kind of mentioned in other videos, but never really talked about it or actually made a shooting video with it because 30 out 6 is weirdly hard to get. I want to get the, the M2 ball ammo that's optimized for this rifle, so that's why I haven't made a shooting video yet. But I'll still make this one so you can see what it is, kind of know the history a little bit. Now what I've got here today is the US model of 1917. It's known to most amateur collectors or people that don't know anything as the Eddie Stone. But, like I mentioned in another video, Eddie Stone was just one of the manufacturers of it. There was Remington, Eddie Stone, and Winchester who made these rifles. So I'd be like calling a um, uh, M1 Garand a Springfield or an International Harvester. You know, oh yeah, go get your International Harvester and you know bring it out here. Well, okay. Anyway, so a little history behind this rifle is in 1914, when uh, Great Britain got involved in World War I, they were trying to design a rifle to kind of replace the short magazine Lee Enfield No. 1 Mark III that they were using at the time. And uh, needless to say, it, it failed completely because the short magazine Lee Enfield was used until post-World War II. But anyways, they came out with a design that... Um, Incorporated a bunch of different cool features like the cock on closing feature. Uh, it had different sights on it though, which is weird. It had the um, rear aperture sight right here, and you could flip up and all that stuff. So, anyways, we started designing, or I'm sorry, we didn't design, we made them in 1914 for England. So, Winchester, Eddie Stone, and Remington were making the pattern 14 rifle, it was called. It was chambered in 303 British, and it held five rounds in the box magazine. It was just a sweet rifle. It was just kind of a in addition to the British um, arsenal, so they had more weapons to fight with. Um, anyway, so in 1917, when the United States got involved, we needed a rifle that could be produced really fast and was less expensive to make. And since we were already making the same rifle, just in a different caliber for the British, and the machining was already set up and production was doing pretty well in the in the uh, with respect to the numbers and stuff. We said, well, why don't we just retool and rechamber these rifles for 30 out 6 so it can be interchangeable with the 1903 as far as ammo is concerned, and we'll just call it the Pattern 17 or the model of 1917. And uh, so that's what they did. And going from a rimmed cartridge to a rimless cartridge in the magazine, they actually gained one round. So you can hold six rounds in this magazine plus one in the tube for a total of seven rounds. Really cool little fact. Um, they're pretty heavy. They weigh probably about nine, nine and a half pounds. They're a little bit longer than the 1903, but about 75% of the American Expeditionary Force in the First World War was issued the model of 1917, contrary to popular belief. Uh, some early units in the Marines and stuff like that that were there early on had the 1903s because they were all federal troops that had the 1903s to begin with. But all these units that were formed from the National Army from the draft um, were issued these rifles because they were quicker to produce and... They were just as effective. Now, my personal opinion on this is I love these rifles. I always have. I always will. They're really, really sweet to hold. They're just, they feel like a rifle, you know, like they, they, they feel like they've got some beef, beef and balls to them, which is amazing. Um, yeah, the, this particular one is a Winchester design. Let's see if I can get that to, uh, zoom in on that. So. If you can see that, it's a Winchester. This one was desire, um, made in December of 1917, according to the serial number and the barrel date. Didn't doesn't look like it saw much use. It's still really accurate, and um, it's in great shape. Let's get the little star next to the flaming bomb, which, according to some rumors, means that it was never intended to leave the United States or whatever. I'm sure it did at one point. Um, there's no import marking on it, though, so maybe it didn't. Who knows? Anyways, so the flip-up sight, like I was showing you, you flip that sight up, and it looks like that from the side, and this thing graduates up to 1,600 yards, which is pretty cool. So you're able to aim down that sight for 1,600 yards. Let me see if I can line this baby up. Oh, it's a lot easier said than done. Yeah. So there we go. That's at 1,600 yards. The battle sight's actually set for 500 yards or something like that. Because if you use the battle sight, this thing hits really freaking high. Uh, what you have to do is you have to flip up the the uh, target sight, the long sight, and flip it down to 200. And then you can actually hit targets that are closer than 500 yards with that. 
So anyway, that's what the sight looks like. The bolt is cool. It's cock on closing. It's a really long, heavy bolt. Unlike the short magazine Lee Enfield, it's got the the more little lightweight bolt. This thing is a freaking beast. So you have to slam that forward and down, which is fine. Not a big deal. Um, but it's a really strong, beefy action. There's not a lot of recoil for this thing, to be honest. As a 30 out 6, usually they're going to have a lot of recoil, like the uh, 1903's got a fair amount. This thing really handles it very well. I got the full handguard on the top, which is pretty cool. Common of a lot of rifles back then. And the front sight is just the uh, the little blade with the two fins to protect it. And that was a really effective thing. Instead of, it, instead of having to make a separate piece, like on the 1903 for their front sight, something that can get lost, this is just a permanent part of the rifle. So I actually like that feature. And then... Hopefully you can see this barrel date. Let me try and uh, zoom in. Maybe it'll focus. Damn camera doesn't focus that well. All right. Maybe you can see the barrel date. Maybe you can't. Um, 12 to 17. And it's got the Winchester W on the barrel. So I'm really happy to have this thing. I love shooting this thing. I, I will get around to making a video on it. I really apologize for not having done that yet. But yeah, the safety right here. Really easy to use, just like an Enfield. Flip it forward, it's good to go. Flip it back. You know, so all you have to do is, especially for right-handed shooters, just, and you're good to go. Because you're not supposed to wrap your thumb either on old school bolt guns. In case you didn't know that, because then you get your thumb in your nose. But, so if you're carrying it how you should, you just flip the safety forward, and she's good to go. Trigger pull on here is not very, very rough. It's uh, fairly smooth. It's a military trigger for sure, but... It could be worse. Um, I, most of these that I've handled, even the Remingtons and uh, Eddie Stones, are just as good quality. And uh, Winchester's preferred because they made the least amount of the rifles. Eddie Stone made the most, and then Remington made, you know, in between. And uh, that's why people favor Winchester's. I just wanted one because of the same reason. And this is at an early date, which is pretty cool. But yeah, this uh, this rifle is just an amazing workhorse. After the First World War, we actually sent these to a lot of our allies, like um, the Free French used these a lot. Um, people that escaped other countries and decided to fight with us in Europe, we issued them 1917 rifles, and they performed very well because they, you know, we just issued them the uh, 1903 bandoliers and the ammunition on the clips, and they could use it. So a lot of countries actually have used this rifle. They're still being found everywhere in the world, which is kind of interesting. So, millions were produced. They stopped making them in, I think, early 1919 or late 1918. One of those two. <clears throat> so, they, they were only made for a couple years, but they cranked out millions in that couple years. Nice finger groove stock here. Reproduction sling, of course. Just uses the 1907 style sling or the carrot no buckle uh, canvas sling. Really love this rifle. It's uh, one of my favorites. I promise I will make a video on shooting. But, yeah, uh, if you got any questions on this. Oh, shit. One more thing. Take the bolt out, it's just like a Mauser action, right? You flip the bolt up, you pull the uh, bolt release to the side, and it'll come out. And then now you can look down the bore. If it'll even work. It's kind of hard to line a camera up with, uh, with this. Uh, it's not going to get to you the angle because it's too small. Anyways, then to put the bolt back in, you just put it in and hit the magazine follower. I think that's all there is to it. Uh, the magazine's like a Mauser too. You uh, push down with the bullet. Pull back and the magazine will pop off. Six plus one in the magazine. I think that's... I'm trying to see if I got all my bases covered here on this rifle. I think I do. It's a beast. Oh, I didn't have the bayonet, but yeah, there's definitely a bayonet for this. It's different than the 1903 bayonet. It's actually a 1917 bayonet. Patterned after the 1914, but it's going to be made with a U.S. Um, property mark on it and whatever. Or no, I'm sorry. That's, that's, that's not correct. I'm totally thinking of something else. It'll just be marked as model of 1917 or whatever pretty sure they're interchangeable with the p14 bayonets though um which are made by remington and such they also featured a green painted scabbard which i think the british ones were just um regular leather but anyways i don't have that in front of me so i'm not gonna not gonna get too detailed on that i'm probably wrong about some of that stuff now that i think about it oh my god god forbid somebody on youtube said something incorrect no nah. um i'll do some more research and make another video on that but yeah, anyways, uh, there's a cartouche, if you can see that on the stock. Um, it's 3GMK. Yep. And then 
This one doesn't have a proof mark on it, which is kind of weird. Usually they have a P mark on the bottom for proof fired, but whatever. Um, yeah, if you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And uh, if you would be so kind as to check out my Patreon page and donate, you know, you can do it for a dollar a month, which uh, less than the price of a cup of coffee. And you can see some exclusive content and uh, we'll do some interactive stuff, live streams and question and answer sessions. So I uh, appreciate everyone watching and uh, we'll see you guys next time on another gun review video.